The Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority was created to manage and invest government revenues to prepare for the eventual depletion of oil resources and for the development of critical infrastructure. The program has been lauded by rating agencies and international observers of the government's economic reforms. After a rigorous selection process to construct a board and select the NSIA's CEO and other key managers, Nigeria's Sovereign Wealth Fund is now ready to start investing. Its triple mandate includes a dedicated fund to invest in infrastructure, an emerging but risky asset class in Nigeria. The tough challenge for the NSIA managers is to find viable projects that will not only provide infrastructure, but that would also provide a return in line with the mandate of Nigeria's asset manager. Other intervention programs will invest, will not invest, they just spend. We're not like that. We have to make sure that these things make sense. They have to have clear business models that we can support. And one of our objectives is to make sure we have our partners come along with us. Because one of the objectives of the NSIA is to be a conduit for foreign direct investments. So we will try to make sure that these things tick all the boxes. You know, it can earn a sustainable return. The infrastructure fund, we are hoping to also earn US CPI plus 500 basis points softly is, is, is the way we're looking at it so that we can also have the same return objectives as the Future Generations Fund. So these are, these are very clear metrics and these are tough metrics to end those kind of sums in US dollar terms are very difficult in some of these environments. So there are not many things that qualify. You know, people say, oh, do this road. I'm like, no, I only do roads that are commercially viable. The ones that are not, the government should do it, what that means. You know, we look at ourselves as a public sector company with a private sector philosophy. So it's existential at risk as well because we pay our salaries from the returns we make. You know, so again, that's a big difference between us and other programs of the government. To better sift through hundreds of investment opportunities, the NSIA is collaborating with partners in the private sector to co-invest in a variety of projects. So we signed a collaboration with General Electric. We're signing one today with AFC and we have about three more in the pipeline that we're working on. We want to keep those collaborations very tight and keep it very small. People who are going to develop pipelines with, we're going to co-invest with, we're going to do documentation, all the things you need, so that that way, as a small team, we can leverage the resources of these bigger partners. We're going to collaborate on it, um, developing and financing infrastructure investments in Nigeria, uh, which would meet both the mandate of the NSIA and uh, AFC. In practice, what this means is sharing information about projects, uh, jointly doing due diligence on projects, jointly evaluating them, and then negotiating and investing in them. And then once we've invested in them, also, and more importantly, I think, working very closely together to make sure that they're realized in a successful manner. We will sponsor deals when necessary. But ideally, um, we'd like to have somebody bring us a deal and then we'll call on our partners and say we'd like to do this deal. And we'll invest across the entire capital structure. We can invest as low as equities and as high as senior secured debt, depending on how we analyze. Or we can, you know, one of the areas we're seeing a lot of opportunity right now is in the mezzanine funding area, you know, convertibles and those kind of products. So we will decide to invest, call our co-partners and say, can we look at this together? Part of the MOUs we're signing with them is if they want to do it, you know, they have 14 days to come back to us and with, you know, it sets out the clear guiding principles as to how we collaborate. We see uh, potential for collaborating in many sectors. Uh, in the transportation sector, for example, there are two or three projects that we're discussing. Uh, we're also looking at um, potentially uh, working together on power projects. As you know, power is a major infrastructure constraint here in Nigeria. And there are one or two other things that, uh, that we've also discussed. You'll appreciate that I can't go into detail on the specific uh, projects, but there's a broad range of areas that we feel we can uh, collaborate effectively on. Infrastructure uh, is perhaps a major bottleneck to economic growth in Nigeria. So for, just to take an example, you know, many people believe that if the electricity situation is improved to say what it is in South Africa, or maybe even in Kenya, that it would add you know, 2 percent to Nigeria's annual economic growth rate, uh, which would take it up from roughly 7 to roughly 9 percent, which is you know, pretty huge. While it's seen internationally as an important part of Nigeria's balance sheet, how does the ordinary Nigeria connect with such reforms? The, the part of our fund that will connect to the average Nigerian is our infrastructure fund. Okay, the other two funds will connect, but in indirect ways, right? Because you, you don't really know what benefit the stabilization fund will have, unless you have a situation like you had recently, and AMCON was created, funded by the government to try and stabilize the economy. 
uh, in the future. The sovereign wealth fund, if such a thing happens, we hope it doesn't, but let's be realistic. You know, economic cycles go up and down, and you know, every once, once in every 10 or 20 years, the whole world goes through a shakeup. Um, and and this, the stabilization fund will be one of those, you know, where if it's really extreme, we'll have to be called upon to help stabilize the economy. I think the biggest thing that the, the sovereign wealth fund is going to do is catalyze private investment. Because think about this, I'm a guy who wants to do agriculture and I'm sitting in Iowa, I'm sitting in Zimbabwe, I'm sitting in Kenya. I'm not going to pack my bags and take all my capital and come down to Nigeria to look for a project and put in. But if a project, a good agric project comes out and the sovereign wealth fund goes in as an equity investor, that guy sitting in Iowa, that guy sitting in Kenya, that guy sitting in Zimbabwe is more likely to bring his capital and get into that business. So what you will find is the sovereign wealth fund will now, be, will now catalyze other private investment. So now we are building a larger private sector that is growing the economy without having the government having a control and impact. And we've all seen that government-run enterprises really have not been the, the godsend that it is. And that is really how it's going to create jobs all over the place, catalyzing private investments, both foreign and local. Collaboration with General Electric is a clear one. We are looking at four areas, healthcare, aviation, power, and transportation infrastructure, especially in the rail sector. Some of these things will be brand new businesses, which will be brand new jobs and will create also other ancillary jobs around the areas. Can you imagine when you invest in rail infrastructure? How many cities? If you look at the northern part of Nigeria, there are many cities I can name to you today that are dead because of the rail infrastructure being in a bad shape. You know, there are cities that used to be great cities in the past, Kavancha and Lafia, all these places. But the rail infrastructure has, you know, not been quite what it should be. That is being revived today. There are investments that, you know, I think over time, not just us, other aspects and other investors will look at that I think will have direct impact. Agriculture is an area we're looking to invest in that will create jobs directly. Healthcare, Nigeria, from the recent research we did, spent close to a billion dollars on foreign medical tourism. You know, some of these things are areas we are looking at also to create opportunities and provide facilities. We've got millions of Nigerians flying out of this country every year, going to India, going to you know, Dubai, going to the UK, the US, and most of Europe. In fact, none of our ruling class goes to any hospital in Nigeria. Here, we're spending billions of our own money to get health care, whereas someone like the Sovereign Wealth Fund could actually set up a specialist hospital and attract and pay Nigerian doctors and international doctors sufficiently well that we at least have one or two, perhaps three specialist hospitals in Nigeria of large size that people can go to. That will, in the long way, mitigate the foreign exchange drain and um, as well as make build income for, for the fund. I think that if they look at their own remit, not just from the point of view of how much many money they make themselves, but also how much money they save the economy, they would actually be making a, a signal return and savings for Nigerians. The local asset management industry is another sector that should receive a boost from the activity of the Sovereign Wealth Fund. If the Sovereign Wealth Fund works like some of the other international Sovereign Wealth Funds where they have local asset managers and international asset managers who manage some of the assets for them, you can develop the capacity in the local asset management industry. You also look at the PE industry in Nigeria, it's, it's very nascent in Nigeria. You have uh, one or two high flyers and some up and coming PE firms. And if the Sovereign Wealth Fund works as a like seed to these PE players, these PE players are the ones investing in SMEs in the market and SMEs are the driving growth for, for employment in any growing economy. So if you can see some of these PE players, develop the local PE industry, and so they can actually make more investments in the SME industry through a private sector-led approach, that could also improve employment. One thing about private equity is, the private equity investors have that much capital. And because they have a finite amount of capital, their ability to take on some projects is restricted by that capital. With a group like the Sovereign Wealth Fund out there who are working with them is the same catalyzation effect. If the, private, if the local private equity sector brings in $10 million, the, and the, uh, the Sovereign Wealth Fund puts in an additional 10 million, that, that additional 10 million that the Sovereign Wealth Fund puts will attract a lot more investors than what strictly the private equity guys are putting. Because again, there's that feeling of a lot more comfort that this is something that the entire country is behind, just for the fact that the Sovereign Wealth Fund is in. The Sovereign Wealth Fund also presents opportunities for AMCOM, the state agency which rescued the banking sector from the brink of collapse by buying up bad loans to do deals to liquidate its huge asset portfolio and pay down bonds guaranteed by the federal government. Um, we look at AMCOM as the sell side and we're the buy side in the sense that they're the ones who have assets now to put out look to invest. Uh, oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm looking at AMCONs. I'm hoping to, uh, when AMCON is ready, to start disposing of some of these assets. 
will look at their at their pipeline and look at things to invest in. I, I think there is room for a great collaboration uh, uh, between the NSIA as a buyer, along with its partners, and the assets that Amcon has to sell. Obviously, everything is down to valuation, how much you expect those things to be worth. Now, Amcon and the Sovereign Wealth Fund really should be two peas in a pod. The Sovereign Wealth uh, Amcon has acquired a significant asset book, and a, a lot of those assets are in companies that suffered from, had capital structure problems and not business problems. With the Sovereign Wealth Fund as a partner, the Sovereign Wealth Fund can help again in this capitalization process. Put a little capital in and bring additional equity capital to go into these funds, to go into these companies, restructure them, which should improve Amcon's recovery process. Because the fact of the matter is, Amcon has a lot of loans that need to be paid back, and only healthy companies pay back loans. And the only way a company can get healthy is if they get that capital, if they get that capital structure right and they're in the right business, then they get healthy. So if we assume that a lot of these companies are in good business if they were just financed improperly. The Sovereign Wealth Fund catalyzing additional private investors to come in would really go a long way to make sure that Amcon reaches its charter, which is walking through this significant uh, troubled loan book that is uh, has acquired. If you think about the domestic aviation sector, here you have a country with so many millions of people um, and there's not a decent domestic airline in there. Um, you've got Arik, uh, with its own challenges. You've got Aero with significant challenges. And on the domestic side, there's really not a decent uh, aviation structure for us to utilize. And when you put that in context of the uh, very weak infrastructure we have, roads, bridges, uh, railway lines to get across, it means therefore that to do business in Nigeria is actually very expensive. And with that, uh, aviation is somewhat cheaper to get things moving. And for a business person in Lagos to get across to, say, Makodi and come back, it would probably take two or three days. Whereas this is something that could be done within one afternoon. So investing in the aviation sector could also be something um, that could save the country a lot of money, which is, we will calculate it as part of the return for the Sovereign Wealth Fund because it's actually the, the birthright. It's all these monies that monies from Nigerians are put into the special fund. And obviously you've got another government agency like Amcon, which has had to um, take up the non-performing loans of these um, airlines, you know, Arik and, um, and Aero. And to the extent that those two agencies could work together, I'm sure they can actually come out with a profitable arrangement. Overall, the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority is a program with potential to make significant impact on Nigeria's economy. It must, however, surmount tough challenges relating to its legality and the growth of the $1 billion startup contribution made by the federal, state, and local governments. I think the key challenge is buy-in, in the sense that there are some constitutional questions about the Wealth Fund and whether it's constitutional. I think that needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed one way or the other, so you can have a long-term um, stability in the fact that the Wealth Fund is going to be here. As long as its constitutionality remains in question, there will be a cloud around how it's going to be funded and the way it grows. Putting in the Sovereign Wealth Fund, as getting it, making it a constitutional part of the government, and are we looking at the Sovereign Wealth Fund as not just a savings vehicle, but an investment vehicle to deliver the promise of the future to, to the next generation. Once we can do that and put it firmly into that, put it firmly into the, into the uh, the constitution so that way we're putting in money into this fund this fund is investing in those areas to continue to grow the economy so that come rain come shine down the road we will deliver the, the promise that Nigeria has always held to the next generation. I think secondly is transparency and that ties it to buying as well I think they need to bother themselves more on the Norwegian um, sovereign wealth fund in where they're very transparent everything they do they list on their website where their investments are, their investment policy, what investments they make. And that gives a buy-in because any citizen can then go on the website in Norway and see where the money is going. And that helps buy-in. So they need to do that. Nigeria's Sovereign Wealth Fund is open for business. It will seek out profitable investments that will hopefully generate a decent return on savings made for future generations and help build critical infrastructure. A challenging task in a volatile global market. If it succeeds, it is expected to not only attract foreign co-investors, but also create much-needed jobs as it intervenes in industries hungry for investments. Wale Famrewa, CNBC Africa, Lagos.